Good afternoon, everyone. No, good morning. Uh, actually, in the UK, it's morning. Here, it's afternoon, so it's both. Um, thank you very much for, uh, for having me. It's my first Eco Summit. I'm excited to be here. Um, uh, as some said in London, I'm an Eco Summit virgin, so no more. Um, what I'm going to explain a little bit about the company, Origami Energy, as well as system thinking more broadly, and in particular, what the opportunity around an, an edge of grid marketplace looks like, the approach we're taking in terms of building that as a business, and the mindset that our investors need to share to go on this journey with us. So briefly, you know, what's in a name? Why origami? It's a bit funny. It's all very Japanese. Well, it's um, because the belief was that the, the value in energy itself is going to decrease ultimately to zero, but the value in the shape of energy is going to increase. So shaping energy with technology was at the core of what we do, shaping in time, shaping in space. So time-based, geospatial control is at the heart of what we do in creating this vibrant edge-of-grid marketplace. And really, it's increasingly real time, and it's many to many. And those are some themes that you'll hear later on. So at its most simple, we buy and sell stuff, right? Marketplaces are good at buying and selling stuff. And what we do, a bit like in the early days of Amazon, we try and make everything look like a book. Uh, what we buy, what we sell, we try at some level of abstraction to make it all look the same. So whether there are many different sources of flexibility providers, many different flexibility users, we try and uh, um, have the machine in the middle able to think about that in a common way. So what we do is we figure out where the underlying value pools are today and where they might be in the future, where those sources of flexibility are today and where they might be in the future, and then try and engineer a machine in the middle, which is a combination of databasing, messaging engines, and a big optimization engine, which is constantly hunting for where is the best value across all the different value pools, all the different counterparties that we've contracted with, all the different supply and demand forces to help point the gun of what is the, every second of every day, the optimum return on assets under management, given all the different counterparties quite often, and they conflict. Right? If you've got a pump in one part of the world or a battery in another part of the world and some local actor wants it to rev up, one national actor wants it to rev down, some uh, a trader who sees a volatility spike wants to use it, who's willing to pay the most? You need some sort of clearinghouse type mechanism to reconcile these conflicting counterparties in the system. So really what we've done is applied our approach to systems thinking to harness that diversity. We know we, br we embrace that uncertainty. One thing we know about the future of the energy market is we have no idea what it's going to do, right? So, so, so given that uncertainty, you need to be able to adapt. And that's hence why we've invested heavily in this uh, ability to hunt for where the optimum value is. Similarly, we adopt a very flexible contracting strategy and manage asymmetric risks on both sides of our market marketplace. Fixed versus variable costs and value, long versus short duration, all sorts of uncertainties and asymmetries that we're then able to manage. And in particular, we take a very high degree of abstraction in the overall approach. In other words, back to the Amazon analogy, making everything look like a book, we have a software production line which tries to identify the next counterparty that we're going to contract with, try and turn what looks like real English and legalese into some sort of code that then the machine can deal with. If you're dealing in the level of language of human beings and contracts, it's quite difficult to optimize outcomes. That's why we've invested heavily in our technology leadership. So abstraction, systems thinking, flexible contracting, asymmetry management, that's what you need to make a really great edge of grid marketplace. We also need is investors that kind of get it. And they get it from actually quite different perspectives. And our three institutional investors, which invested almost 20 million pounds in the company, um, all bring quite different perspectives, but a common vision with us. Octopus back entrepreneurs. They believe people and ambition can change the world. Cambridge Innovation Capital backs technologies and the ability to disrupt and create new markets. Fred Olson, a 150-year-old family investor from Scandinavia, take very long view from ships to fuel, fuels to wind farms, wind farms into technology. So they understand that technology can transform the value of energy assets. So a combination of entrepreneurship, deep technology leadership, and asset value enhancement. Really, that's represented in a nutshell from our three institutional backers. 
So thanks very much for your time. Uh, if you're interested in either contracting with us, investing in the business, we're talking about systems at the edge of the grid and creating a bold new market, uh, I'm pleased to speak with you. Thank you very much.